Onto end.
morning, dear students. Welcome back to our chapel program. And this chapel program, once again, is connected to our GNL 110 and character development. Please watch this video. And after that, please answer the questions link that we are sending to with this video. And if you answer this correctly, you will receive attendance credit for this chapel uh, program. So we are opening the link from Tuesday, 9 o'clock to Friday, 9 o'clock. So we hope all the students will do this and we complete this requirement. Before we begin, let's pray together. Our Father God in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity to have our online chapel program once again. Please be with my students as they listen and watch the video. Please give them understanding and be able to answer the question correctly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our chapel talk today is entitled Light Pierces the Darkness. Okay. So there was a man called Billy. He looked happily. He looked very happy because of his new wife, Lolita. She was beautiful and he was proud to have been able to leave his small island country, the kingdom of Tonga, and bring her to the United States. Lolita looked admiringly at her handsome husband. He was huge. In fact, he was preparing to represent his island country as a weight lifter in the Olympics. She felt safe with him, even though mothers had warned her of his one weakness, a quick temper. They would have a great future together. Their first baby would be born within a year. After Lolita was settled in their new home, Billy returned to his country to finish his training for the Olympics. Every day he went to the gym to further build his muscles. He was surrounded by the other weightlifters who also hoped to go to the Olympics. Billy started fiercely at them, determined to be, at, to be the best. At the end of one day, everyone had gone home except for Billy and one other weightlifter. Harder and harder, each pushed the weights determined to outlift the other. The other man made a joke. I bet your new wife could lift more than you. Immediately, Billy's anger flared up. He flashed back with some cruel words and strode towards the man. Within moments, the two men were wrestling. Billy hit again and hit him again and again, and soon the man crashed to the floor. Billy did not stop until the man lay unconscious. Suddenly, terror-stricken at what had done, he fled from the room for the jungles of his small island. Before long, someone discovered the man laying on the floor and rushed him to the hospital. It was too late to save him and he died. It was long, not long until he, the police found Billy and led that strong man, who was truly weak, off to prison. The Olympics would go on without him. His wife would deliver his son all by herself in a foreign country. Now, like Billy, many people look great on the outside. They may be handsome or beautiful, sophisticated or health wealthy. The outside hides the weaknesses inside. Given the right circumstances and difficulties, the heart will be seen. Sin cannot be hidden forever. It is like saying, try to hide a dead elephant with a lotus leaf. We must all search our hearts carefully to see what hides there. A weakness that seems like a small thing can be the seat of a terrible crime of every hurtful action. Pride and selfishness have destroyed millions. If we don't know our own hearts, how can we prevent such suffering? We must take time to know our weaknesses and make changes. We should let the light of truth dispel the darkness. Now, every, even very religious people often have hidden sins that no one knows. Jesus, the compassionate teacher, often dealt with such people. Israel was a country of deep devotion to the ancient scriptures. Some people were sincere in their beliefs and practices. On the other hand, many of the leaders were more concerned about the gifts they received from their services and the chance to advance the positions of honor. Jesus taught to people to make sure that their hearts and their actions were both good. And he said to the religious leaders, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. First, cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. You can find that in Matthew 23, verse 20, verses 25 to 26. Now, Jesus wanted to help the leaders experience the joy of a pure heart, but many of them, many of them, resisted his kindness and his wise words. They were jealous. They saw crowds of people flock to listen to him. The religious leaders taught the people that the poor and the sick were cursed by God and deserved their suffering. When they watched Jesus heal, 
the sick and encourage poor, they became angry. The religious leaders performed many ceremonies to keep themselves ritually pure. They did everything they could to not touch a person or another race or someone who was considered evil. Their outside was clean, but their hearts were dirty with prejudice. Jesus, on the other hand, sought out people no, the people no one else cared about in order to teach them a better way of life. The religious leaders were concerned that many people believed Jesus was the Messiah, the one sent by God. So Jesus called himself the Son of God and said he had lived from eternity and had come to save people from their sins. Jesus' incredibly wise teaching, pure life, and miraculous powers gave evidence that he was from God. Still, the religious leaders shut their hearts and would not believe in him. Now, what happens when people will not listen to their conscience and follow what is right? Their hearts get harder and their sin grows stronger. Over time, across the nation, jealousy and anger towards Jesus increased among the leaders. Once time a group became so angry and they pick up rocks to stone him. Another time they tried to push him over a cliff and Jesus calmly walked away protected by angels from their anger. Now after that, Jesus predicts that. Many people today are also very committed to religious practices while forgetting to search their lives for prejudice, hatred, and greed. We must remember to let the light of truth dispel the darkness. Jesus continued his work quietly in the countryside, especially focusing on training, focusing on training his disciples to carry on his work. Jesus knew that his time on earth would be short. And he then took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man. It will be accomplished, for he will be delivered to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scorch him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. Now, Jesus' disciples were shocked to hear these words. They didn't understand. They expected Jesus to be with them for many years. Some hoped he would become the king of their country, overthrow and revenge themselves on their enemies, the Romans. Then they hoped Jesus would make some like prime ministers ruling the land. Jesus had taught them a different way. He had taught them to turn from hatred, anger, and revenge, since these are the seeds of murder and led to suffering. And he had said, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you, bless, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. Just as you want men to do to you, you also do them likewise. This is an amazing teaching. If the whole world followed Jesus' wisdom here, there will be no wars or even crime. Still, these disciples couldn't comprehend why Jesus would go where he must die. If Jesus knew in advance, that he was about to be killed, wouldn't he go in another direction? If you knew what someone was planning to kill you tonight at your house, wouldn't you run to hide somewhere else? Now Jesus was not afraid of death. He had said to his disciples, I lay down my life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. Now, the prophecies of the ancient scripture had said that someone pure and holy would come from heaven and teach people righteousness. That person would be hated, rejected, and killed, not because of any personal sin, but in order to receive the sins and suffering of the world. This would make a way of escape from suffering, like a mother who runs in front of a car in order to save her wandering son. So Jesus determinedly began walking towards Jerusalem and his own death. How about us? Are we willing to be kind to those who hate us, to risk death or help others? Are our hearts still selfish? As we think about Jesus' kindness, it will help remove the dark and hurtful thoughts that come through our mind. We can choose to let the light of truth dispel darkness. May the message that we listen today help us to grow in faith and love one another, accept Jesus, and have a holy life. Let us pray together. I forgot in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for this time, for the chapel program. May it help us to grow in faith, to grow in knowledge of truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.